Hello and welcome back and today I want to continue talking about the Terror Master, the Terror Master F5. I've banged on about this channel quite a lot because I genuinely think this is one of these big moments in the NAS brand's life where they're going to hit the mainstream very, very quickly. And so many of you out there have been hearing more and more about Terror Master, not just here but on other platforms too. And you want to know more about it and more precisely how it compares against pre-existing brands. Now today I want to compare it against the WD. Because this WD NAS, a year and a half ago, I talked about it a lot. And then it kind of fell into relative obscurity. There's lots of reasons for that that I'll talk about throughout the course of the video. But today I want to let you guys, and um, help you guys even, choose between these two NAS. You've got this brand new dual core NAS. This is the Terramaster F5221. And it arrives with a dual core uh, Intel Celeron CPU, the J3355, a, uh, a 2.0 GHz CPU that can be burst up to 2.5 GHz per core. And we're going to compare it against the CPU and memory included inside this WD. This has got a Pentium of all things. And this NAS here has got the, the Pentium N3170, which is again is a quad core 1.6 GHz Pentium based CPU and 4 GB of DDR3 memory. So we're going to compare these in a number of ways, but if hardware is the most important thing to you, congratulations, WD MyCloud is the best one for you, roll credits. But stick around because they've got very different attitudes with regard to software and ability. Because WD MyCloud, when I first spoke about it, one of the main reasons I was so, so impressed with this device was because of the way it performed as a Plex Media Server. It was by far the most affordable 4-bay Plex Media Server NAS out there in terms of performance and what you've got for your money. So for example, in the case of this WD, you can transcode 1080p with ease. It had hardware transcoding built into it that Plex could take advantage of. On top of that, it arrived with just the best support for transcoding without you requiring a Plex Pass to use the transcoding abilities of that CPU. NAS is like the TerraMaster, like Synology and QNA, required you to have the Plex Plus, the premium edition, in order to take advantage of that hardware transcoding. Also, that CPU in general is a great deal more powerful. So, at the time of its release, it was compared favourably by me and others against other NAS brands for Plex. But the minute you step outside of the Plex bubble, that's, this is where we started encountering inconsistencies. Because... Outside of Plex and support of third-party applications for, say, surveillance, such as um, Milestone, on top of that, um, DLNA media server use, and, of course, Apple Time Machine and cloud access with WD MyCloud Online, it doesn't have a great deal more in the software stakes to offer you. There's lots of simple things it offers you that almost all the brands give you. Um, one of the uh, I spoke with someone at WD a long time ago about this device, and one of the things it said is, with Synology and QNAP and TerraMaster, you can do um, 50 or 100 things quite well. Whereas the WD can do three or five things really well. And what it comes down to is what you're going to use your network attached storage device for. Because TerraMaster may have been a rather budget NAS brand, there's no denying that. But the speed of their evolution and now their prominence from NAS buyers, both home and professionally, makes it very hard to ignore the fact that they've got a lot going for them. Their software, TOS 4.0, 4.1 now I believe, is incredibly fluid with loads of first party applications, third party application support, mobile apps and more. On top of that, it supports Plex Media Server, it supports container station, download station, snapshot background checks, BTR, FS, on board as a file system of choice. It's a, this five bay, Supports the very latest 14 TB hard drive from um, Seagate. Now, don't get me wrong, there's WD and there's a Seagate here. We're not going to plug too hard, but there's no denying that um, the hard drives, the, when you get this, you buy this empty. So you can install any hard drives you like inside, and you can go as big or as small as you like and go gradually. Whereas the WD, you can buy it empty, but it also arrives pre populated with just WD hard drives, but moreover, you get those drives cheaper overall if they're pre-populated than if you bought them at retail. But that's still not enough. And outside of Plex performance, which of course the PR4100 dominates in this comparison, in almost every other regard, it is fantastically lackluster. It doesn't have the user interface fluidity 
that the Terramaster snogs your QNAP does in previous comparisons, as I've showed you. Whereas, um, again, Acestor, Thecus, Terramaster snogs your QNAP, all of these NAS brands have an incredibly fluid kind of operating system that you deal with that feels like you're dealing with a desktop computer remotely and it's incredibly lovely. The WD gives you the sort of options you find on your ISP router that just pop up in the browser, very basic and prone to error. You can't even use the device when you're installing other applications. You can't do those in the background. And there's just so many ways in which the WD outside of Plex is real disappointing. And that's why over time, people have bought it and gone, ah, Plex Media Server, great. And when they've used it for other things, suddenly gone, oh, kind of, I, th I thought it would do that. Oh. Can't, it doesn't do that very well. And that's kind of the main reason why a lot of people have been, you know, spectacularly let down in later revisions of the operating system and everything you can do with the WD. Because although they've overhauled a number of the features and functionality of the WD PR4100, it should be mentioned that Plex now doesn't run as well as it did at launch. It doesn't arrive with the latest version of Plex for a start. And it, hopefully by the time of this recording, they've updated it. But it's not as easy to update your Plex on this in the same way as accessing it via all of those multitude of mobile apps and uploading your files is significantly easier on other devices. It's also worth mentioning that um, although it does perform better in Plex, this performs pretty damn well. And for an extra hundred quid, you can get the quad core Intel Celeron version of this, which is really advantageous too. Now, are there other reasons why the WD should be purchased? Yes, of course. Notwithstanding the warranty, which weirdly, if you buy this device without hard drives, is two years warranty, but three years if you buy it with hard drives, go figure. Um, but if you turn the device around, it does have one of the most unique selling features I've seen on a number of NASs, something that they supply and no one else ever has, which blows my mind. Dual power supplies built into the bottom. So you can have two PSUs on this, and if one breaks or blows because a PSU is the second most fragile part of any computer um, then after that apart from throwing it out a window um, apart from that that PSU if it fails you have a redundant power supply so you can maintain your access but given it doesn't run a number of the key applications for a number of you out there as well as a number of its uh, competitors the you know the use of that redundant power supply then becomes a little bit you know debatable don't get me wrong, the Terramaster, it's only got the one PSU built into the bottom, and it's got two LAN, that's got two LAN as well. It's got USB, that's got USB. This does have HDMI, so you've got localized access as well as network and internet access all at the same time. And the WD has got their LCD panel built into the top. This just has LED lights. There's lots of reasons. I mean, in terms of robust quality of build, it should be mentioned the WD is incredibly robust. It's got nice spring-loaded metal bays that you slot the drives into. It's got an LCD panel, one-touch USB copy button built into the front LCD panel, metal chassis, and just generally a nice sense of ruggedness. But it's also the noisier of the two when it's running, which isn't. It's going to be a bit annoying, annoying to the, well, a lot of you. Now, when I say noisy, I don't mean like ah, da, 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 but what I mean is it's noticeable above the hum of the hard drives because. You know, the hum of hard drives is hard to get away from. Don't get me wrong, you can install SSDs, great. But you still can't get away from it if it's louder than the drives that are inside. Now, the Terramaster isn't perfect. There's loads of reasons why it's not perfect. For a start, of course, it doesn't perform Plex anywhere near as well. The chassis is quite a lot more plasticky. It's a combination of plastic and metal. The software, although very, very nice, isn't as good as Snow to your QNAP. But I still think it's better than WD's. And the device itself just generally lends to a feeling of uh, of budget, of value. But for a number of you out there, you don't care. And although the design isn't as nice, in my opinion, um, on the Terra Master compared with the WD, there's still no denying you're not going to be looking at most NASs most of the time. They might be stored in an attic, in a cupboard, somewhere where you're not going to see it. So design is less important in an aesthetical sense. And that's why this device for around 450 quid without hard drives, or this device for again, 450 or even less in some places, although they're the same price, if you're not buying it primarily for Plex Media Server, I question the utility of this WD MyCloud in the long run, not just against Terramaster, but compared with other devices. Now, 
We haven't seen anything new in terms of NAS from WD for a while. So whether that means that like Seagate, they're going to bow out of the NAS market, or if they've got something new up their sleeve, we, we know we haven't heard anything yet. We've got Computex around the corner at the time of recording and more, so fingers crossed we learn more. But otherwise, that has been my comparison of the Terramaster F5 against the WD MyCloud Pro. Hope you enjoyed it. If you disagree with anything I've said, or have got stories that back up or completely dis disagree with me, bung it in the comments. And support this channel with your like and your subscribe if you enjoyed it. Because I need to keep these videos going and I can't do that without your support. It's simply a click. I'll see you later on.